Okay. All right, let's listen to Shadow of Intent, Barren and Breathless Macrocosm, featuring Trevor Strinad from uh, the Black Dahlia murder. So, let's have a let's have a look see. All right, here we go. The first thing I'm noticing is how crunchy and and rumbly that bass is, and I like it. Big thumbs up on the bass. Man, they're vocalists, man. He's got that. He's got that low tone. Cool riff. Ah. Black Dahlia murdered. The singer looks like my D&D dungeon master. <laughs> he probably plays D&D. Oh, cool. Love it. Yeah, love it. like the type of band that can play this tight live. <laughs> nice. Oh, cool. Trevor's back. Trevor's highs are better than his... Are those lows or is those mids? He just said macrocosm. I can tell that. <laughs> I can't understand any of this. But that's okay. The mix is just fantastic. Uh oh. Little tempo drop. spacing and we're back nice I love that <laughs> that's fun The drummer gets to show off in those spaces. He gets to do some fancy stuff in that spacing. I love that. 
Cool. The orchestra. Orchestra metal. Hey, that's cool. That was a cool song. That was fun. That was fun to listen to. Well, I think as before, I don't really uh, have much to say for the mix. I think this is from the same album as what we listened to before, which was like Malediction, I think. It was awesome. You know, like basically all I had to say about it was like I, everything was audible. The bass is incredible. The drums are incredible. The guitar tones are amazing. I still feel the same way as I do about the vocalist. I just, I think he hits those lows really, really well, but there's like not, it could be just the, what they recorded with or something, but there's like not enough like power underneath his, his lows. I, I don't know. Like there's like, there's almost like a hollowness to his lows that I'm like, it's just not striking me in the way that I want it to. I'm not trying to say that he's a bad screamer. That's not what I'm saying. I think he's a very, very, very talented screamer. Nothing, nothing's too high endy. The bass end is full. Everything's nice. Um, let's check out those lyrics. The magnum opus of God's disdain, like ants they burn under a watchful eyes. I decide who lives or dies. Oh, how divine! Extinction of the human swine in ex- <laughs> I'd rather not like dive into like the the finer details of what he's saying here because there's there's lots of poetic lines here. There's lots of poetic stuff here. I like that it's not graphic. I like that it's not really. It doesn't feel like it's written with shallow motives. It feels like there's a lot of anger towards uh, humanity, justified anger towards humanity, considering human co- humans can do some horrible stuff. Some of us are more guilty than others, but he's he's like he's like speaking from the perspective of some sort of judge that decides what happens to humanity. It's kind of another one of those I am God, I am the decider of everyone's fate, and I'm going to kill everybody. You know, that's kind of like the general of it so the perspective of the singer or maybe character that he's singing as has a strong disdain for humanity and he calls them human swine and then he calls them earthly parasites and then he says nyctophobic incantations swell within their hides so there's a growing fear and i guess a spell of fear because the incantations I mean, incantation is like some spellcraft stuff and it swells within their hide. So like fear swells within them as he's destroying them. Basically, the message that I'm getting is that humanity is awful and his character is singing about how he's going to rid the earth of humanity. That's kind of the the, the gist. I don't know. Uh, it, I mean, again, you have to be kind of into this kind of stuff. You have to fe- be feeling a lot of anger in order to feel some sort of catharsis from these lyrics. Again, I kind of get the vibe that these lyrics are more about sounding very cool and dark than they are about the writer's actual feelings and general consensus of how he feels about humanity. I don't think that he feels any of these things. You know, he might feel to some extent that humanity is awful because I, I feel the same way. But, you know, again, I'm not like blown away by the lyrics. I'm not like thinking that these lyrics are life changing or anything like that. They're not they're not blown me away. It's just, uh, it's okay. It's just okay. Um, if you're looking for some sort of like kind of poetic dark, like if you're looking for like very dark poetry about wiping humanity off the face of the earth, then these are the kind of lyrics that should strike your fancy. But for me, I'm not as into it. And so, yeah, I mean, they're into that kind of stuff. They're into the witchcraft stuff. I'm not into it. I'm not into the uh, the witchcraft and the bloodletting and the tarot cards and the torture and the voodoo dolls and the... <laughs> I'm <laughs> just not into these things. There's a lot of crossover between darker music, darker metal, and witchcraft. And so it's just it's just it's inevitable. You know, you're gonna see you're gonna see people that are into that. They're gonna show that, showcase that kind of stuff. I mean, we just saw a video with you know, human sacrifice sending sending some dude into the astral plane and there's like dark sorcery surrounding it and uh, this is the kind of stuff that a lot of these people are into and I'm just I'm familiar with them because I it grew up all around not witchcraft necessarily but I grew up around a lot of people and have played a lot of shows with people that are into that kind of stuff and have even made friends with people that are into that kind of stuff 
it's just something that I don't dabble in because I fear inevitable judgment from God for dabbling in those things. You know, I'm not supposed to be messing with sorcery or witchcraft or anything like that because you're playing with spiritual fire. If you're dabbling into witchcraft and those kind of things, you are putting your soul, your very soul at stake. You're inviting things into your vessel that might not leave. We'll just, we'll just say that, right? Uh, I mean, you might be into tarot cards, you might be into some really, really dark stuff, and you might be into summoning literal demons, you know, to do your bidding or whatever, and casting spells and things like that. You might be digging yourself into a hole that you might not be able to climb out of. And so, just a fair warning. I've had to give close friends of mine personal warnings of like, hey, you're getting into some stuff that I fear is not going to let you out, you know, and this is the kind of stuff that people can get into and once they're in it their spirit is locked in and there's no way out unless you unless you call for jesus jesus is the only way out of this kind of stuff i'm just letting you know just be careful what you what you mess around with be careful uh with what kind of spells you cast you're messing with real stuff it's not just a game that you're playing that all of the sorcery and stuff is real and so when I see this kind of music video, it kind of strikes me as like, okay, well, maybe the members of the band, like, they just think this is all very cool and aesthetically cool, but this is real stuff. You know, like all this witchcraft and sorcery, like, that's real stuff. It's, it's no joke. It's real. And so watch out for your soul and make sure it belongs to God and not to some demon that's going to just leech off of it and, and consume it until your vessel is no longer yours catch my drift <laughs> anyways yeah that's shadow of intent barren and breathless macrocosm we we get into dark content in case anyone's into this i have to reflect light back into it so people can at least know that i said something about it all right i'll talk to you guys soon well let's see what the next one is i'll see you guys next time peace peace